Hey everybody, it's Coin Snobs. I'm Keith. And I'm Jason. And today we've got a very different looking box of quarters. We've never seen this box before, so we're just going to do a quick open. Yeah, it's a weird it's... style of box. It looks like an old style box. Yeah, with but... the font on it, it just looks a little yeah, funky. Different. Something we haven't seen, but you know. Different? Different. Very different. Oh, we've got some Salt River... That's a really good looking older quarter right there. That one right there? I was looking at this one. Look at that one right there. Uh -huh. Or is that the... I have to use my finger this way. <laughs> yeah. Now that... Anyway. Anyway. We'll see yep. what we get. Yep. All right. Gonna go through it and we'll be back right about now. All right, guys, here it is in its entirety. Still have no idea why that box was weird, other than maybe it's just a weird box, or they're changing the design, or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if you guys have ever seen a box like that, throw it down in the comments. We're just curious to know if that's a normal thing, or what it was. But anyways, starting over here in 1996 Philadelphia with a die crack. Don't find as many of those as we used to. If you guys remember from back in the olden days, the before times, we used to find a ton of Philadelphia anything with die cracks. Leave it to Philadelphia to give us at least one die crack. Again, we don't find these as much as we used to, but hey, it's always cool to find them. And then we have some clashes. Uh, I don't remember what year this one was. 1965 and 1974 looks like a Denver uh, not super clash you could definitely tell that the mint worker had caught it because there is definitely some places where you could see it's been polished um, but still pretty neat to find we keep them and then we had some dye chips this one is a little bit different than the more common one that we find on the Arizona 2008 Philadelphia Quarters. Uh, as you guys probably know, typically the die chip is going to be down at the bottom of the cactus. It looks like a little bit of an extra, you know, like rock or boulder obscuring the designer's initials. This one actually has the die chip on top of uh, one of the cactus arms and it looks like a flower. Let's take a look at that real quick. Right there on that little arm, right there. Looks like a neat little cactus blossom. And again, different than what we usually find. Maybe a little bit of a die chip right there. But that could also be damaged, hard to say. And then we got a snowy roof, 2015 Homestead. And then these are the more common ones. But this is kind of a good way to show you guys how those die chips below the cactus can vary. Because this one is quite a bit different than this one. Example number one, as you can see, the designer's initials are pretty obscured, not totally. But on this one, it's a little more aggressive. Let's see if I can get them both in here at the same time. Yeah, so as you can see, slightly different. And then we got a die chip right there in the horse's schnoz. Yeah, he's got a booger beak. All right, then over here we have struck through grease. And struck through grease right there in states. And over here we have some mint states. 1981 Denver. Pretty decent condition. And a Virginia. And here we've got an American Memorial Park. And one, two, three of the 2021 Tuskegee Airmen. Of course, all Denver. If any of you guys out there are looking for Denvers and have Philadelphias, let us know. We'll certainly trade with you guys. You know, trades, stickers, whatever. Let us know what you guys are thinking. Then we have one, two, and three Puerto Ricos. Uh, the 2009s, we keep anything that is... AU or better. If it's trashed, we don't keep it. And then down here, we have our infamous feeder finger damaged Salt River Bay. One, two of those. 
All right, so there's the very first one. So basically, if the feeder finger is maladjusted, it will scrape the top of typically the anvil die. It can also obviously happen on the hammer die, which is the reverse die, anvil die being the reverse die. Uh, but more commonly, again, on the reverse die, it'll be maladjusted. It'll scrape the very top of the die, and every coin that's struck after that will have these little scrape marks right here, uh, making these pretty much sisters. I mean, it's almost like, if you think about it, it's almost like a fingerprint. Uh, feeder finger. Uh, again, I know I've told you guys this before, but just in case there are some new folks here that don't know, uh, it ejects the already struck coin and loads a brand new unstruck planchet, a blank, coin blank, into the striking chamber. There is coin number two. See if I can get it good there under the light. Sorry, these LED lights on this scope are a little weird. But yeah, it seems like every single one that we find is exactly the same. And we literally have uh, a tube dedicated to just these. And it's almost it's almost full. Just these Salt River Bays with the feeder finger damage. It's it's kind of weird. And then feeder finger down feeder finger damage down here on this guy. I don't remember what year this one was. 1991, nope, 1993. And the feeder finger scrapes on this coin are a little bit deeper. It's kind of hard to see because the coin is, of course, older. But right here below the wing, you can definitely see where it made contact with the feeder finger. Yeah, that coin is definitely what you'd expect to find from a 1993. But, I mean, we'll keep it. And then a bat. A 2020 and then just to the right of the mama bats head more feeder finger damage a decent amount of Canadian quarters got one two three and four of those kind of odd this is a 2021 Denver the brand new Washington reverse Washington Cross in the Delaware but it's got kind of a bit of a gold color I uh, can't quite tell yet if it is just heat damage or if it's actually uh, improper annealing. I have a feeling it's just heat damage, but take a little closer look at that one too. What do you guys think? Heat damage or some kind of an environmental damage? I don't think that's an annealing error. And then here's something you don't find every day. At least we certainly don't. Not on modern coins anyway. This guy right here. A North Kadota, 2006? Yeah, sorry, my eyes are terrible. But anyways, looks like it has a little bit of lamination right about there. Take a closer look at that one also. Yeah, it's so hard to get this thing to focus right. But if you look at it, it looks like there's a little bit of a lamination that's left. It's no longer retained. And then there's a little bit of retained lamination right here. You can almost probably peel that up and remove it, but of course we're not going to do that. Don't find a lot of lamination errors on the newer coins, so neat. And then we have some gold-plated quarters. Got two of them. Got a New Hampshire and a Wyoming, both with the gold plating. And again, that's technically a damaged coin. Uh, a lot of people collect them, and you know, if you collect them, God bless you. Again, collect however you want to collect and collect what you want to collect. Um, we have a bunch of these. It's not something that ne necessarily, you know, thrills us, but it's still pretty cool to find. No cash value, of course. Same token. And then we have a San Francisco Struck Business Strike 2017. Those, of course, were only available in rolls and bags directly from the Mint. And then here's the good stuff. One, two, three West Point quarters. Got a Weir Farm. And there, of course, is the Privy Mark V75 for the uh, 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Only found on the 2020 West Points, which makes them even easier to find. Man, it sure is heartbreaking to start uh, seeing these... West Points pop up with a pretty decent amount of circulation and damage, but I mean, it is what it is. West Point is a West Point, but 
This was probably at one point a really beautiful coin. Got a bat, of course. This one's a little bit better condition. Still showing signs of circulation. Yeah, never mind. I lied. Yeah, bag marks, scrapes, and yuckies. And of course, what would our West Point finds be without the American Memorial Park West Point Quarter? Not that we're complaining, because we're still finding the West Points, which is pretty cool. Looks like somebody was a little bit angry at this sucker, but whatever. West Point. Again, American Memorial Park. Very cool. We have quite a few of these. Uh, me and Keith joke quite a bit whenever we find these American Memorial Parks and it's reverse first. We always joke that it's probably going to be a West Point because we find so many of them. Not that that's a bad thing. But that is it. If you guys have any explanations or ideas as to why that box was weird uh, and or if that one brand new 2021 was... Uh, a kneeling error if it was heat damage again i think it was just heat damage but either way uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and do so best way to support the channel and it's totally free thank you guys who have subscribed to us recently tick the bell so you get a notification every time that we do upload a brand new video throw it a thumbs up if you liked it because that really tells youtube that we're doing something right or maybe at least we're interesting even if we're doing something wrong. Till next time guys, love you all, God bless, and we will see you soon. Stay safe.